The strong turquoise colour of Lake Tekapo is caused by glacial silt particles from glacial erosion. The fine silt particles, also known as glacial flour, don't sink to the bottom and instead remain suspended in the water. When sunlight hits the surface of the lake, the blue-green wavelengths are scattered back, and hence the lake appears to be a fluorescent turquoise colour on sunny days. On rainy days it looks more like the standard colour of a South Island lake, as you'll see in my photos. The opaque turquoise colour is particularly apparent in Tekapo River, where the water is deep and you can stand on the bridge and look directly down at the turquoise surface. I visited Tekapo in early spring, hence the lack of flowers in my photos, but if you visit in late spring or summer, you'll see the lupins flowering. Tekapo has low light pollution, making it one of the best places in the world to view the stars. You can visit the Tekapo Dark Sky Project Observatory and book a stargazing experience there. I bought a day pass to visit Tekapo Springs, which is a great place to relax regardless of the weather or season, so if you have a rainy day on your holiday it's a great place to go. I really enjoyed it there. Another great activity to try is horse trekking. When I was relaxing in the pools I saw people in the hills above the pools doing a horse trek, and it's definitely something I want to do next time I visit Tekapo, but you do need to book in advance. You can do short rides or longer rides that take several hours where you get to see amazing views of Lake Tekapo. The sheepdog statue was created as a token of gratitude for the work the collie dogs do on farms. The plaque says without the help of the collie dog, the grazing of this mountain country would be impossible. This is Pines Beach, where the edge of the lake was sandy when I visited. Pines Beach is in front of the New Zealand Motor Caravan Association Park. If you walk around to where the supermarket is located, you'll see large rocks and stones on the shoreline. So this is where I took these photographs if you want to visit this location and photograph this as well. The flying fox is next to the supermarket. The Church of the Good Shepherd is an Anglican church, but it's used by various Christian denominations. It was built in 1935 on land that was donated to the church, with the intention that it would sit alone with no other buildings obscuring its view. The bell commemorates Audrey Barker, who sadly died at age 21, in the same year the church was undergoing construction. It was built by Les Looms and Doug Rodman, and upon its completion Doug was the first to be married in the little church. Unfortunately, there have been a number of tourists in recent years interrupting church services, which meant a fence had to be constructed five years ago to protect the church and the parishioners. When I was visiting the church, there was an insta-narcissist posting with distasteful fake prayer poses at the door, while her boyfriend filmed and photographed her disrespectful behaviour. She complained loudly about people getting in the way of her shot. This is sad to witness, as the people who she claims were in her way are New Zealanders, the people who live here in this country and who built the church. She might see this country as an opportunity to get likes on Instagram, but for us this is our home and it's awful dealing with rude and abusive tourists. I do encourage tourists to respect local people and their culture when you travel overseas. The other tourists who were admiring the church and taking photos have every right to be there and shouldn't be shooed away by someone trying to become famous on social media. 
Standing there at the door doing silly poses gets in the way of other tourists who are trying to photograph the building respectfully. I really don't think New Zealand is the right choice for insta-narcissist tourists because it's more of a country for nature lovers. I think there's so much more to life than staring at yourself in the mirror and taking selfies. And if tourists put down their phones for two minutes and look around, they'll see the flowers and the details and the stonework and woodwork. Maybe even try talking to local people and learn a few things. So please remember, this is a real church, used for worship by real people. Happy travels! Bye!